I warmly welcome all of you to the Naga Ancestral Voices exhibition on behalf of the Highland Institute, Koima. So we are really excited uh, to, to hear or listen to the actual voices of our ancestors from more than a hundred years back is uh, really exciting. It has been a great pleasure for me to uh, get the opportunity to take part in this uh, organization of the exhibition. This uh, research project, it, it ran from uh, January to uh, March um, of this year. And um, it's essentially, as has been mentioned, about the Sunday recordings of um, uh, John Henry Hutton. These were made in the early 20th century. And indeed, they have been um, inaccessible for a long time in Nagaland. A little awareness about uh, the fact that Hutton made these recordings and that they are accessible also. So uh, for this reason, we thought it's, um, it's a good idea uh, to make these recordings also accessible physically in the exhibition for visitors to listen. So this, uh, as has been mentioned, is uh, probably the uh, first of its kind sound exhibition in Nagaland. So we are very uh, happy that we could organize this. Then, uh, long story cut short, the uh, 12 cinders uh, that remained intact, they were later digitized at the British Library. And uh, they are also now accessible on the website of the Peter Rivers Museum. So you can uh, see the link here on the, on the slide. And um, apart from this, the museum also has a collection of uh, Hutton's papers. That means uh, there are some recording notes and uh, a lot of official diaries also and lots of other manuscripts and notes. Apart from this, the museum also has uh, many uh, photographs by Hutton uh, from Nagaland. It's a huge, uh, huge collection. Um, I believe uh, hundreds, if not uh, thousands of photos. And um, apart from this, the uh, Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology, Cambridge, uh, it also has a large uh, collection of uh, Hutton's um, papers and correspondence. And here, uh, just a short picture, small picture of the uh, Sunder phonograph. This is just a, a sample picture. It's from a phonograph uh, at the British Library. And um, this is not the Sunder with which uh, John Henry Hutton recorded, but presumably it's uh, a very a similar type of Sunder. So these were essentially portable devices. Uh, this type was, incidentally, it was called the suitcase, um, the suitcase model. I think it's easy to uh, understand why. And so basically they had a detachable horn and they also ran without electricity, um, which is, uh, uh, yeah, which was quite a large advantage in that time, especially. Uh, here just a, a short, uh, some short notes on the uh, website. Here's just a screenshot of the John Henry Hutton archive. So if you, are, if any of you are more interested in this, uh, you can also um, see the, uh, look it up online. That's on the website of the Petrovas Museum. Um, the website also has a, a catalog of Hutton's photos. Uh, not all are digitized, but uh, I, I don't know how much, but a certain percentage of the photos has been digitized and is accessible on the uh, website of the Petro Rivers Museum. Now, why do we do all this, this research project? Is it just for own career or vanity? Hopefully not. Um, important point, of course, the recordings are part of the intangible cultural heritage of Nagaland. By intangible cultural heritage, we mean the oral history, the songs, everything that has been orally transmitted, and um, music and dance in particular. Now, as I mentioned, the communities have been disconnected from the recordings for over a century. And although the digitized recordings have been accessible online on the website of the Petrovius Museum since 2012, 
uh, not many people know about the recordings in Netherlands. And another important point is that the recordings are so far not accessible at archives in India or in Netherlands, where they would be of interest, of course, to communities and researchers. And this is also something we try to address through this uh, project, um, namely um, that we update the documentation of the recordings. And um, after that, we will uh, provide copies of the recordings to the ARCE in uh, near Delhi and to the Heidel Institute here in Wageningen. So that uh, the recordings with documentation are at some um, regional depositories um, where people can access them easily. <coughs> Um, another important thing is that most of Hutton's uh, recordings are actually uh, very poorly documented. And this is uh, because of the fact that Hutton was essentially not a musicologist and he apparently regarded his uh, song recordings. It, it was in essentially in that period that song recordings, they were just uh, seen as a means uh, that also happened in uh, with musicologists that they used to record the songs and just uh, sort the, sort of regarded the recordings as something temporary and um, then they transcribed the songs and uh, they tried to write down the notations of the melodies or the lyrics in their books and they regarded these things the transcriptions and uh, the translations and um, the notations as the important things. Whereas they didn't uh, actually take so much uh, care about the recordings, or they didn't consider the recordings, the physical objects, as uh, such important things, it said. And uh, for this reason, uh, many of Hutton's recordings have just, uh, we find very brief notes. And um, these are often handwritten notes. And um, I will come to that uh, a bit later. And, um, so it, it's a bit of a puzzle work if you try to make sense of his notes. And um, we also uh, we use these publications to um, uh, make sense of his recordings because actually Hutton, as I've mentioned, he uh, transcribed and uh, wrote about uh, the songs in his publications. And yeah, and this is also one reason why we do the field work because in, in effect, I'm, I must admit, I'm fairly new to the whole topic of Nagaland. So in fact, I came in February this year, I, I was the first time in Nagaland. And it, it was, uh, naturally it was an amazing experience. I was uh, fascinated by the, by everything, by the culture, by the, by the people, by the landscape, and uh, it was just a great experience. But the whole topic of Naga culture is quite new to me. I'm still learning about this. And um, in the course of this field work, uh, we have, uh, with the help of um, uh, community members, whom we have uh, played the recordings. We, we played the recordings to them and, and then we uh, asked them about their impressions and uh, what they think about the recordings, how relevant they are to them, if they can say us something about the songs that were sung, or if they could say us, uh, give us some idea how they may have been recorded and in which context. So these kind of uh, questions we ask them. <coughs> Just a bit uh, to the background of the project. Um, so it is funded by the International Association of Sound and Audiovisual Archives. And um, the partner institutions, uh, which I have already mentioned, are the Witteröver's Museum in Oxford, then the Archives and Research Center for Ethnomusicology, that's in uh, Guagao, near Delhi, and of course the Island Institute in Kohima. Um, let me just uh, briefly outline the, the project phases. So the project had three phases. Um, the first was essentially archival work in uh, England. That means I, I was visiting the archives there and uh, I was looking at Hutton's recording notes and his uh, uh, other uh, archival documents. Uh, also at his liter literature, naturally. The second phase was the fieldwork in Nagaland, of, about which I have just spoken. And uh, the third phase is bringing it all together. 
and compiling all the gathered information into uh, the spreadsheet database, meaning the documentation of the recordings, and to share the recordings with the documentation um, with the archives. Again, just a sample picture. Um, here we see actually a handwriting that is not patent, that is actually from the uh, curator of the uh, Pit, River, Pit Rivers Museum. That was uh, Henry Balfour in that time. And uh, he apparently wrote this um, song title on the box. Um, and uh, yeah, and on the next to that we just see uh, the box cylinder. Actually not the cylinder itself, this is uh, the, the container of the cylinder. Uh, I, I got actually I got a box cylinder here. If anybody is interested in, in that uh, such items, I can I can show it afterwards. And um, so it's essentially a, a cardboard container, and inside is a, a box cylinder on which was recorded. And uh, this cylinder box was inside sent inside the box. Demo. share one brief example about uh, what this research project actually uh, yielded some some good outcomes so this is not in sand writing um, it's not very clear even if you see it on the paper and um, on the right side I have uh, written down uh, what is actually uh, still on the website of the Red Rivers Museum and there it's written a uh, metan cutting song at uh, Sema Harvest Festival. Sung by Vikelpa, Hultike, Likia, Hoito, and Rigeko. Something like that. <laughs> and what? And of what? Um, these are not actually funny names. These are names that were wrong, wrongly transcribed. And um, as you can see from the uh, <coughs> note that I put below, this should actually be a meet and cut song at Zimmer Harvest Festival. And then the names that he wrote down were actually Bikepu, Mitihe, Nikie, Oito, and Hezeku. And these were actually his um, um, assistants, or sorry, maybe I should say rather contacts. And um, they were from uh, Zunoboto, all of them, and they were uh, Sumi uh, translators who uh, assisted Hutton in his uh, administrative work. And this information we found, uh, well, as I mentioned, it's, it's kind of a puzzle work. So on the one hand, I had to go to the archive and see, see the note again, the original note, the handwriting. And then uh, what uh, we did was to um, compare that with Hutton's uh, publications. And then I realized actually, uh, these are the names that uh, he's mentioning in his uh, monograph, the Semanagas as his um, uh, translators. And then it became clear that this, this must be um, those persons. And um, yeah, and this is essentially how the, how the project is uh, helping us to make sense of the recordings and also uh, to make them more valuable for the uh, Naga communities. Because it's, 
uh, can give us so much information about the context of the recordings. Um, yes, just a few more pictures from my fieldwork here, an uh, example from Konoma. <coughs> and uh, there we found, for example, that some, at least one song that Hutton recorded is still uh, practiced in, in the village today uh, in a different version. And we had actually um, the farmer uh, Kosali Sofi, who is on, on the right of the picture, uh, he sang the song for us. Um, the same song that Hutton recorded in a slightly different version. And we also used some of the pictures from the uh, Hutton collection of the Petrobras Museum to um, find out a little bit more about the um, change of traditions uh, and, and the festivals. So we found out that some of the festivals are in fact still uh, uh, celebrated in, in the village. And um, for example, um, Tekangi, Gena, the Tekangi festival, um, about which we talked uh, with uh, Kosali, Sophie. Um, and unfortunately, it was just a very brief visit to the village, so there was not too much time to really uh, um, go into detail of all of this. Um, but um, I hope there will be opportunity in the future to, uh, to do some more research on it. And here are some pictures from the Hutton collection, uh, pictures made by John Henry Hutton. And this is how we, how we did it basically. So this is a picture from, from the uh, Heidel Institute um, with uh, one uh, Chang musician, uh, Benjamin Kropper, who listened to the Chang songs and actually provided us um, very detailed information about the songs. This is um, track number five on the first soundboard. And he actually, with the help of elders from the Sun district, uh, he was able to give us the almost complete translations of the songs. And uh, I think he sent the links to the recordings uh, to them, or maybe he, he sang them to them on the phone, I'm not quite sure. But um, basically, through this context, we, we could find a lot of uh, out about the recordings. In other cases, it, it's much different, and some other recordings we found out very little about. Um, it's, for example, a Hutton Sangtam uh, song recording. And after the listening session, we had an interview with them to uh, ask them about uh, the recordings and their impressions. Uh, yeah, we also promoted this a little bit on social media to create some awareness about the project. So if any of you are interested to see the picture, some more pictures, um, you can see that on Instagram, uh, Naga Ancestral Voices. And this is uh, how the database looks, basically, that we are providing to the archives in the end. And uh, we hope that this will also be useful, useful uh, for researchers uh, in India and in Naga, especially um, to work with the recordings. I'm very much indebted to the Highland Institute, uh, all of the staff of the Highland Institute. Uh, without, the, without the help, I would have achieved uh, just a fraction of um, what uh, this uh, research project actually yielded eventually. Uh, I'm Mao Aaron Odio. Uh, I'm an artist and uh, I'm also an art educator. Right, right here is my. Uh, centerpiece of the whole exhibition is called uh, the uh, Bull Roarer. So here it's a double-sided uh, hanging sculpture. Uh, I carved this into the shape of the uh, Bull Roarer. This is a young Konyak boy with, uh, uh, who is actually playing with a Bull Roarer. So Bull Roarer is a forgotten uh, instrument but in the early days, Buru was uh, played to chase away spirits. This is a double-sided sculpture. So you might be thinking, what is this all? Uh, you will not understand if you don't go to the other side. So yeah. Uh, on the other side, I have a uh, sculpture of a mit uh, mitun hain, uh, the full moon, which is slightly fading. And the circle is like uh, the forgotten culture uh, slowly fading away. Our motives are fading away slowly. We, people are actually misusing it. And then like a lot of things happening around it. We have to now start understanding the culture. 
around the around the burrower are spirited uh, uh, wood carvings. This is uh, this is the high spirited human being, a flower. In every tribe, we have a flock tale of the high spirited human. Uh, also, uh, I uh, carved out and added the life stone. You know, in my own version, it's called Oha. Oha is a life stone. So, in every tribe. There is a life stone, like uh, like like earlier I've mentioned uh, in Kazakeno, like they they have the spirit uh, stones uh, where they cannot touch. Actually, uh, it brings a bad omen to the village. Also, I I also carved out uh, the yeah, hunting uh, spirit. The, and only this the tattoo of a cognac wear, cognac wear. Uh, and then with the dough in, in it, it's showing that it's sleeping actually, the head hunting spirit. And around it is a very old uh, spear and also a, a weapon. So I, usually, actually, like uh, iron was feared, so it was, it was also a bad spirit. And here is the animal spirit actually. So the animal spirit, uh, it's just a symbol that they also uh, feared animals in the olden days. Uh, this is this section is the uh, section where it was before before Christianity. I mean in Nagas like uh, well the exhibition inspired me to be very honest. The the recordings uh, the different sounds and also, also of course with uh, working with eight who is not here and Cortina Child uh, who she, we, we constantly exchanged talks and yeah I think it's wonderful yeah thanks. Uh, I run uh, an art, art institute called the Art Village where it's just um, here in DBS colony and then also we have in some some other uh, uh, locations. We we have different uh, three different di diplomas for now. Uh, if interested, uh, anyone can come and speak to me, or, or we'll be in the office. My staff will be in the office, so they can connect. Uh, to, uh, they can look for the art village. So that's where we work. Uh, we constantly keep doing art. Yeah. For wood carving, there was no formal education. To be very honest, uh, I, lear I, I learned it from some se senior artists. Uh, formally, I've learned uh, the theory of art, but practical wood carving, I learned it from uh, the traditional artists that still exist, like the senior artists like Leptin Jamir, Nivotio, Nivotio Kiyo. I also learned it from London. Uh, so there are a few, three, two, three artists, the last artists that are actually here. So we should, uh, young artists should constantly go meet them and then learn from them as well. So, the, yeah, in Kohima, in Kohima. So, uh, although uh, I know about traditional art, it was like sitting with them and learning in some way uh, has pushed me so far to do wood carving. But it was challenging to do uh, first start uh, wood carving, but yeah, informal education taught me this. Yeah. It's a wood. Uh, it's it's called gamari, but uh, also it's a very soft wood, and it's I think it must be around uh, 20 to 30 years old. So we have to carve out from that lock, and it took some time. Yeah, uh, all the pieces here, I think uh, it's very hard to get assistance on your artworks. So we did it alone. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, before Christianity, this is after the coming of Christianity. And now this is the present situation. Here is the portable sun in Nagar region. So in the painting you will see uh, the identity pin door. Uh, also the Murum shows that it's a, it's a very uh, like he's a very rich Naga man. Actually owns the house after throwing the feast. So all the motives on the houses are like that and here is uh, the elder uh, brother who is actually very upset about his homecoming. So, uh, the composer was uh, from the Bible story, uh, as well as the recordings, uh, how it was narrated. Uh, it was very difficult, but yeah, we tried to compose it in one frame. Yeah. yeah, we did it together on this one. Not painted it together, but composing it together. Yeah. He's a wonderful artist. His name is Mr. Uh, Delisey. Yeah. This is a small sculpture of the exhibition, uh, but this is a double-sided sculpture. On the back is the Naga uh, arm 
Google Fedger. Uh, it clearly says that we still have uh, uh, our identity uh, really strong. But in the front, we have a sculptor with a big mount. Uh, it shows that uh, how our people are feeling, how selfish we actually have become uh, as a, a, in general. Uh, and also, uh, the, the stones are still there, lying there. Our culture is still lying there, but we are so confused. So this is the confused generation. So that's what basically means. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much.